Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new podcast. Yes, Knowing Wheel is returning in 2023, season 3 of your favourite Formula 1 show and sadly everything is returning. Jamie183 is back. Wow. How, how are we doing mate? <laughs> That's probably, probably the worst introduction you've ever given me, I think. Um, it's getting it's up probably there. up there, but yeah, we start as we need to go on in 2023. We're here, we're back, uh, and F1 is not back yet, but in two and a half months' time, we'll be flying. We've got, what, 62 days left at the time of recording wow, this show. that's quite a long time. <laughs> that, is, that is a fair old time still, but t- it's, it is only two months, Jamie. This, this show will go live on, I think, the 3rd of January, right. and Formula 1 is back in Bahrain on, what, the... Fifth or the sixth of March? I thought it was mid March, but there we go. I got my facts wrong no, already. It's early March. It's definitely, definitely early March. So knowing wheel is already now in the bin. It's now going to be renamed <laughs> to slightly knowing wheel. Not knowing dates. Um, the new new title. Not knowing dates. Exactly. Exactly. But we do have big news as well for 2023 of knowing wheel and to kickstart season three. We're going to be bringing you guys more socials. Yes, we have launched... Uh, well, we actually already had launched a TikTok, but we haven't really done anything with it. Uh, we've launched an Instagram page. We're going to be launching a Twitter as well and a Clips channel here on YouTube. So, you know, you kind of get the best bits from Knowing Wheel as well. So there'll be links to all of those down in the description if you're watching on YouTube. Obviously, if you're here on Spotify as well, of course, there'll be links to that on YouTube as well. Please do give us a follow everywhere if you do enjoy the show. You know, like we said, 2023... We've got some incredibly big plans uh, for Knowing Wheel as well. And, you know, we kind of want to kickstart the year with a bit of a bang. So, yeah, make sure you go give us a follow on all of the relevant social medias. You know, we're going to be trying a few different things with it this year. You know, we're going to be sort of seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. But it should be a bit of fun as well. But obviously, like Jamie mentioned, you know, we're still two months out from the start of the real Formula 1 season. Of course, winter testing is in about, what, seven weeks' time now. Um, so we thought today, you know, kickstart the year. It's Bank Holiday Monday here in the UK. Uh, Jamie's on time and a half pay uh, for doing the show. <laughs> we, we just thought we'd do a bit of a news roundup and then also some bold predictions. As, you know, we're so far out right from the start of the season, we can probably look back in even March and laugh at just how bad some of these are going to be. Indeed. This was the point last season where Matt put Williams in fifth place in the Constructors. Um, so it can only get better. That's all I'm going to say. Here we go. I'm going to start then with Williams. They're going to finish P4. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, let's let's quickly just run through a few things then, Jamie. We're actually now starting, and it, it seems rather early, doesn't it, to be getting confirmed. But we are now starting to get some car reveal slash livery reveal dates for 2023. Indeed. And it's that time of year again where they all start announcing. But um, yeah, we've got three of them. Alpha Tauri have announced their livery reveal, not a car reveal. But yeah, the same thing really, isn't it? for us non-aerodynamicists um which will be the 11th of february uh which is unveiled in new york which will probably be a fashion show as well as a car reveal if it's anything like the previous two years um if it's in new york as well yeah indeed <laughs> <laughs> uh so that's yeah the new car obviously they want to improve on ninth place last year but i think we discussed a couple of weeks ago they probably have one of the weakest driver lineups on the grid uh this year so we'll have to wait and see for them but that's yeah 11th uh I can't remember what day that is. I think it might be a Friday. Um, but I have just made that up. So I've got one in seven chance of being right. Um, um, <laughs> let's quickly... No, it's a Saturday. Oh, close. We've got to get up on a Saturday. Well. This is shocking. But we, I mean, like we, we will be doing um, cover, little cover stories on each of the livery slash car reveals as well. Um, you know, so we, normally we just do like a 10, 15 minute podcast where we go, that livery is the same as last year. And then we sort of talk about each team's goal, and then Jamie predicts that there's going to be 36 wins. And then we pretend that we know what aerodynamics are. And you yes, talk about those exactly. tunnels that someone. Venturi tunnels. That was. Venturi tunnels. <laughs> that's as far as we go. Um, but yeah, that's the first one so far, confirmed. Um, if I remember rightly, usually Haas traditionally is the first one. So hasn't been announced Haas yet. Haas have been. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the other two, we got Aston Martin on the 13th, two days later and Ferrari on the 14th, which will uh, accompany all of us who don't have a date on the 14th of February. Well, at least I know I'm going to be spending Valentine's Day with the person I love the most. Yes, I'm going to be joined by English Fabio Capello. <laughs> and Fred Vasseur, of course, yeah. Um, yes. But, I mean, yeah, so Alpha Tauri obviously only revealing their livery. It's kind of to half be expected. You know, I think it'll be interesting to see what Alpha Tauri do in 2023 because it's basically now a question of 
will they potentially now be able to get some data from Red Bull? Um, you know, like we sort of see other teams copying Mercedes and Ferrari in recent years. You know, are we going to see AlphaTauri now going? Oh, that that looked quite good on the Red Bull that last year. We might we might take that. Um, Aston Martin, Jamie, where do we start? Fernando Alonso <laughs> believes Aston Martin can fight for a title in between the next two and three years. Yeah. How many times has he said this? Yeah, you might as well just like rinse and repeat. Go copy paste all of Alonso's quotes from. When he joined Alpine, when he joined McLaren Honda, <laughs> like everywhere he goes, he's like, "We're going to win a title," because <laughs> uh, he's probably quite positive actually about Aston Martin so far. Um, but he's only been there like what three weeks? <laughs> I don't even. Well, know. Technically, he's only been there since yesterday. Oh yeah, at the true. Time of recording. True. So it's not all fallen apart yet. Uh, <laughs> but it's probably a matter of time, to be fair. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't. That's... I don't particularly see. I mean, I don't see why not in the future because Force India were always a team that pushed for their weight in terms of budget, and now they've got a budget. They've they should do well, but they haven't since Aston Martin took over. To be perfectly honest, um, so yeah, there's no real reason why it should change in the next two to three years, like he's saying. Um, but we're all here for optimism, and hopefully, I do like Alonso. I do I do want him to get one more race win ten years after his previous. That'd be quite mad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's weird, isn't it? Because let's be fair, Aston Martin were probably actually one of the quiet unsung heroes in the second half of 2022. They were the team still making the big development pushes, yeah, definitely. And it did almost work for them. Almost, of course, they tied with Alfa Romeo at the end of the year, but they were comfortably quicker than Alfa Romeo throughout most of the second half of the campaign. Mm. And of course, were really pushing up towards Alpine and McLaren. Yeah, it certainly certain races at the end of the year that suited their car they were probably the best of the rest really obviously usa is the one that springs to mind because uh they were running in the top both in the top six early in the race um so in terms of trajectory they're probably them and mercedes i would say are probably on the highest trajectory momentum wise going into this year so if they can continue that then it could be a good year for both those teams until, of course, we get to Bahrain, Fernando has an engine failure and just spends the rest of the year bullying Lance Stroll. Yes, indeed. Um, which I think if Stroll was getting quite comfortably beaten by Vettel, I think Alonso will put him in the ground, to be honest. It is just going to be that Simpsons meme, isn't it? Of stop, stop, he's already <laughs> dead. Come about round four of the year, yes. isn't it? When Alonso's dunked him by like a second <laughs> in qualifying. I mean, let's be fair. Lance Stroll could, could pull off the upset of the century and actually be a fair competitor to Fernando Alonso. But if he is, I will eat a shoe <laughs> on the podcast come the end of the year. Clip that. It, it, just no one believes it's going to happen, do they? Like, Alonso is absolutely going to just destroy Lance Stroll. There's no other way of no. kind of sugarcoating it, is there? I don't think so. Um, but yeah, especially especially in qualifying, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, but Fernando Alonso, of course, you know, I'd still say he's probably a better racer than a qualifier. Yeah. But that being said, he is still a very consistently quick qualifier as well. Mm. And Lance Stroll is consistently pretty dog poo on a Saturday. Or a Friday. Or most Saturdays. Or a Friday. It's bizarre, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, is it six sprint races? Yeah, we've got six yeah. sprint races confirmed, haven't we, in 2023. Well, that takes us up, what, to almost 30 races throughout the entirety of next year. That's a lot of my team career mode. That is, I mean, (laughs) if I do a full 10 seasons of my team career mode, that's going to have to be 310 episodes. That's that's one a day. That is basically (laughs) one a day throughout next year. I've got to start recording early, I reckon, on those. But I was actually trying to segue us there, Jamie, uh, into talking about, you know, a replacement for the Shanghai Grand Prix, but but you completely... Yeah, I've scuppered the segue. You cut me out of that one. So we're going to kind of tiptoe our way over there then of course shanghai we, we still haven't got confirmation as to whether we're even going to get a race uh, to replace it but there are still a few interesting candidates aren't there yeah definitely um it kind of like could could go anywhere really um obviously we've got a, a flurry of completely capable grade one circuits from 2020 when we needed loads of circuits out of nowhere uh 
so yeah, the likes of Portimao, uh, Magello, Turkey, they're all kind of throwing their hat in the ring. Um, personally, if I had to make a call, I don't think it will get replaced. And we'll just have okay. 23 races. Is it 23? I think it's 23. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, let me just double check. Full or schedule. 22. Uh, it's 20, oh, 3, 7, oh, 11, 15, uh, 19. No, it is meant to be 24, so we go yeah. down to 23 again, wouldn't we? Yeah, which would be a bit of a shame because it leaves a ridiculous gap. Like we had, was it last year? I think, it, yeah. Like we yeah, had last year weeks, where you've it? got round one and two and then a two-week gap. Then where China was meant to be, then another two-week gap. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, right. Um, I think... Like the logi- just, oh, that's a word. Logistic wise, that's <laughs> buzz <of> that. <laughs> um, the race before is Australia, so if they want to, like, it makes sense to replace it with an Asian circuit, ideally. But there's not really any candidates. Um, ah, I would love them to go see, back to Sepang, um, but that won't happen. There's, there are some candidates. Sepang have sort of flirted with the idea, apparently. Again, mm. obviously, of course, this is all speculation. But, of course, the always the big issue for Sepang was the fact they couldn't get enough seats in the grandstands. Yeah. Formula 1's exploded since 2017. I think there is a possibility that this could be Sepang's return to Formula 1. And that's a lot more sensible than the two other d- ideas that I'd like to float around. It's one of them Kyle Army, by any chance. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, because wow. that's in completely the wrong direction. Yeah. I had two one of them apparently has actually been spoken about jamie but i'm not convinced that being adelaide i heard about that yeah i'm not convinced i i could vie with a return to the adelaide grand prix of course australian supercars they still race there uh, each year it's normally in november though rather than at the start of the year but it kind of fits you know f1 is trying to be sort of more carbon neutral and sensible and things like this and going from saudi to australia Australia to, you know, Nürburgring or Portimao <laughs> and then back over to Baku probably doesn't look great. But, you know, Saudi to Melbourne, Melbourne to Adelaide, Adelaide to Baku doesn't look so bad. You know, you're kind of heading back in the right direction after the Australian Grand Prix. The other one that I would love to see, and I know I've mentioned this before in the past, can we not get Fuji hosting a Formula 1 Grand Prix again? <laughs> That would be sick. It would be. I And I think they deserve it because Suzuka, don't get me wrong, you know, it's a historic circuit. Suzuka's it's got way plenty better than heritage. Fuji. But Fuji, there's a very good chance, mainly because of the huge front straight, that it could deliver a better Grand Prix. Mm. Because let's be fair, Suzuka has often delivered fairly snooze fests because there's not much space to overtake. Nah, and if you tell me it, 20, the last year's race was good, but that was pretty much entirely because of the weather. 2019 was but, good, which was the second last time. Yeah, I suppose. It, it's delivered <laughs> some pretty good races still, but if you're trying to suggest to me that Turn 1 at Fuji isn't the best overtaking place in Japan, I don't know what is. <laughs> in the whole of Japan, not even just in Fuji. In the entirety <laughs> of Japan. just in. The, Jamie, it's got a 12 kilometer straight yeah. into a hairpin. If that doesn't scream They'd get around there like a minute, place. or maybe under a minute now as well. No, nowhere near. It's about a minute 15. Yeah, but back in 08, it was like a minute 10. So they no, would they would. don't think that's it. right. No, that is right. I don't think that's right. And, and no, unless Felipe they didn't Massa's have the chicane, time. you get me Felipe Massa's poll <laughs> time that says a 1 minute 10, and I will believe you. I do not believe that was the case. Was it 08? Oh, it's Lewis Hamilton. It was Lewis Hamilton. Oh, it's 118. Never mind. There you go. <laughs> See, thank you very much. But they they would be getting what seven seconds off that now, I reckon. Uh, yeah, six or seven. So yeah, it'd be quite a short track. I I'm I just like Suzuka too much, and I don't think. No, but I'm not saying get rid of Suzuka. No, I know. I'm saying have both of them. I'm not sure they would have both. To be perfectly honest, I think you're pie in the sky a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. But I still wanted to float the idea out there. I think sensibly if F1's going to pick somewhere they should be trying to target Sepang or Jamie India I wasn't actually going to oh. say India I was going to say Istanbul uh, yeah but that India would make sense another good shame. Istanbul would be it's... good India they're doing MotoGP there at the Bud International yes. Circuit which 
has kind of been derelict for 10 years, but MotoGP is going back, so there's no reason why F1 can't. And it's obviously a huge market that they're kind of leaving untapped at the minute. So that would be cool if we go back to India. Sebastian Vettel to return to carry on his winning streak. Yep, he's got to keep that streak <laughs> alive, hasn't he? I mean, it, like you said, of course, you. I genuinely do think Formula 1 is going to push to replace Shanghai. I just feel like there's too many options that they can't at least really try to. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I I think it's... If the race was in like meant to be in October, November time, then potentially they could. But because it's in April, which is quite close now in terms of uh, how fast Formula 1 moves... That's going to be a struggle to replace. Uh, I think I think we'll agree to disagree there then, <laughs> but for the sake for the sake of the show. But obviously, we kind of wanted to do one last little thing, like we mentioned at the start. Jamie, we're going to give three bold predictions for the F one twenty twenty three season. Bold prediction number one, Jamie, and I want some justification. <laughs> well, we've kind of already accidentally revealed my first one which i wasn't really expecting um Have we? but i'm gonna go for lance stroll to be whitewashed in qualifying by fernando alonso <laughs> we which, said bold predictions jamie i mean that we haven't seen a whitewash in five years since alonso did it to van dorn so yeah that's what i'm going for and i think okay it's it's, it's not like a safe bet because over 23 slash 24 races out qualifying in every single one is quite ridiculous and if Alonso manages it then fair play but yeah. obviously Lance Stroll is not the best qualifier in the world otherwise you wouldn't be making this prediction but yeah I've gone Stroll to be 23 slash 4 to nil against Alonso again we did say bold <laughs> predictions and you're trying to say that Fernando Alonso is going to be a teapot next year great basically so, uh, okay, you know, fair enough, fair enough. I, I'm going to try and go a bit bolder than that then, Jamie. I'm going to say 2023, Alpine, McLaren, and Aston Martin all score a podium. That's that's fairly fairly bold in terms of boldness. But, uh, yeah, we only had, what, one of those three score a podium last, g- last year? Yep. Um, yeah, so you're predicting we're going to see a return to the... Uh, 2020 slash 2021 ways of podiums for everyone there's a correlation there because Hulkenberg wasn't in the sport at that point yes. they decided everyone could get podiums now so that's why I haven't put Hass on there <laughs> yeah yeah the pain but um <laughs> I would be a little pessimistic about all three of those because thinking back to when we used to have three teams at the front which is kind of what we had now but back in 2019 and previous you had Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull, all quite clear of the rest, it makes it extremely hard for outsiders to get podiums because you're relying on four of the top six having problems, <laughs> which is quite rare. Whereas when you only have two fast teams and one of them is driven by Alex Albon, you only need to have one of the proper three have a problem. That's, it's, it's a fair <laughs> argument, but what we've also seen in recent years is back when there were only three big teams... Alpine were nowhere near what they've been able to do in the last couple of years. McLaren have learned a lot since then. And Aston Martin, of course, you know, like we mentioned, their huge upward trajectory in 2022. I can see, you know, I don't think we're going to see a complete change of the order or anything like that. But I can see each of those teams, you know, a bit like Lando at Imola, having weekends where they're close enough and things fall into place. And I think, which we didn't get this year, we're going to get one of those mad races where you get like, you know, like a like a Spain, uh, not Spain, sorry, in a Monza 2020 or like a Baku 2020. <laughs> All three are doing one race. Where, where you get like two teams from the midfield get a podium. I think we're going to see a bit more of a return to that, of course, because I think what we're going to see over the next four years is, or three years, sorry, even, is of course that the front teams can't gain as much anymore so that all the other teams play catch up and get a lot closer. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But I am I would disagree with you. Num- but my, number two. <laughs> despite disagreeing with your prediction that midfield teams will struggle to get podiums, I'm going to say that Pierre Gasly gets a podium uh, and also in doing so uh, beats Esteban Ocon in the championship. Okay, so we're going to say that Esteban Ocon, who beat Fernando Alonso, <laughs> is going to get beaten by Pierre Gasly. <laughs> well... There were a lot of 
extenuating circumstances for Ocon to beat Alonso. I don't think he should have done. I think a lot of people would agree with me. And He's one of those circumstances he was French and Alonso wasn't. Yeah, indeed. But now they're both French. <laughs> they're going to get equal favouring. So, yeah, I, I really back Pierre. I think he kind of, he was delivering very solidly in the first half of the season as much as he could. And then as soon as he signed for Alpine, he kind of checked out of, of trying with AlphaTauri. So, I think it would be a good return to form. Obviously, 2021 was probably his best year in F1. Um, yep. So, yeah, why not? Get him a podium. Back on, he's only had three in his career, one in each place, which is quite cool. Uh, and all for AlphaTauri, of course. And hopefully, I, I, I mean, I sometimes pretend to be a Gasly fan on occasion. So On occasion. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of heart overhead a little bit, but hopefully Gasly can beat Ocon and also get that podium for Alpine. That's what bold predictions are all about, though, Jamie. You know, you 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 believe, you believe in your personal favourites and things like that. And that's why in 2023, I'm saying Mercedes are going to win at least six Grand Prix. At Interesting. least. I'd probably they won back one that. last year. They won one last year. I think you know they they have confirmed they're going to be sticking with the zero side pod concept, which kind of scares me. Zero uh, side pod, a zero, zero win. That's how it goes. Z- well, they did win one race last year with no side pods, so True. we'll wait and see. Um, but I think, you know, they, they were getting on top of that car towards the end of last year, and I wonder whether those statements are more about just trying to make Red Bull and Ferrari look over their shoulder more than anything else. But I think, you know, not necessarily saying that Mercedes are going to fight for a world title, but I think they're going to be a whole lot closer. And is it fair to say we'll play second fiddle most likely to Red Bull? They might sort of take what Ferrari were in 2022 away from Ferrari. Uh, I think, yeah. I, I it's, an inter- it's a really difficult one to call, I think, with Mercedes. Because if you start the season in Mexico, which is, what, three races from the Four races from the end? Three? Three or four races from the end? I think, yeah, they probably have, on average, the second fastest car. Maybe the fastest car. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see. Because... I don't think there's going to be massive evolution of these cars. It's going to kind of be like a... No, there will be evolution. There will not be revolution. That's the saying. <laughs> yes. um, so, yeah, it's kind of like a continuation of last year. And if the trajectories are to be continued, then Mercedes should be right up there capable of fighting, uh, which would be good for all the Hamilton and Russell fans. So, well done, Matt. You might actually get something to celebrate this year. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, similar. I kind of have to have to back your prediction because my final prediction is driver and constructors champions are different from each other. So like we saw in 2021, uh, where Verstappen obviously won the title, but Mercedes won the constructors. Uh, I'm going for that again, basically. I don't want to commit to those two things, like Verstappen and Mercedes, but if I had to choose one... That's what that's, what, that's what I would say. Okay, that, that's interesting. So, so yeah. you reckon we're going to see a repeat of 2021? I basically maybe. think Perez is going to be a fraud uh, and will not help Red Bull as much as he did in 2021. And now, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question then, Jamie, based on that. Do you think, therefore, that it is just going to be Checo is going to be dog poo and Red Bull are just still going to have the best car and Verstappen's going to be able to lead from the front? Or... Surely, if it's going to be Mercedes up against Max, Russell is going to be a much bigger help than Bottas was. Yeah, but I think Red Bull will still have the edge. I think in 21, they okay. they had such equal cars that the teammates played a big part. I think Red Bull will be a touch faster, and Verstappen, I think, is better now than he was in 2021, especially when it comes to risk versus reward in battles. Um, but, yeah, I think... You'll, because the top three are going to be quite close, I think you'll have a Stafford winning and Perez down in fifth and sixth, while the uh, the Mercedes finish second and third every week and bag the championship. Okay. Okay. Um, final bold prediction then from me, Jamie. And I mean, this one isn't particularly <laughs> bold still. It's only happened once, I think once ever, actually, though. For this team, so it is, it's, it's no, it's, yeah, once it is just the once, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a fairly bold prediction, I suppose. Uh, sadly, 
I have got not a lot of faith in Williams for next year. It would not surprise me if we get towards Bahrain and they still don't have a team principal. <laughs> it just kind of feels like one of those things that everyone's going to go back into the factory and kind of they're going, guys, 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 we haven't <laughs> we haven't boss? sorted that still. <laughs> Who's telling us what to do? Um, but I, I'm saying Williams are going to be the only team next year that fails to score a point. And I feel really bad saying it because I want to see Albon and Sargent both get a fair shot of battling with other cars, but... I'm still very worried that we're in the process of the downfall of Williams. Yeah, I just had a quick look. They finished 10th in the championship every year but one since 2018. But they did score <laughs> points in all of those seasons apart, apart from, from 2020. Yeah, but how yeah. they scored points in 2019 is beyond me. Robert Kubitz are the well, goat. Hockenheim, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and didn't, going back to your whitewash comment, didn't George whitewash Oh, Robert maybe Kubitzer? he did. I thought he did. Yeah, because he was unbeaten until like most of the way through 2020, yeah, wasn't Yeah, and then Latifi he? beat him. And then Latifi beat him somehow. Yeah. We, we, miss, we miss the GOAT himself, even to this day. Yeah. <laughs> the Is only man to beat George Russell else? in equal machinery. Yeah, very true point. Well, Robert <laughs> Kibitza did as well, remember? No, that's what I mean. That's Kibitza. Oh, sorry, I think you meant Latifi. No. Nah. <laughs> Is there anything else to go through, though, Jamie? I mean, it's been a fairly short show to start the new year, new year, hasn't it? But, you know, things might still be fairly quiet until we get back in towards, you know, sort of, you know, next month we've got the car reveals, we've got pre-season testing. Everything gets a bit more exciting then, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, no, I think we basically nailed it. Start as we need I to go on in 2023. Exactly. New Year, exciting times. Like we said, make sure you go follow everything linked down in the comments below if you're here on YouTube. Of course, a massive thank you as well uh, to our Spotify listeners. You know, it is greatly, greatly appreciated as well. And yeah, we will return then next Tuesday. I'm sure we've now said this, Jamie, and there's going to be massive news breaking yeah. within the next hour in Formula One. But yeah, we will return next week then with more Knowing Wheel. <laughs>